How's it going, ladies and Bruce's I'm Bobby Six and welcome back to Abyss of the Sacrifice. Uh, it is time for Jitka and Weed, and maybe we'll be able to do Contagion, or if the others unlock when we finish Weed, maybe we'll do one more. But the last one, only we could only do one because it turned out to be a very long one. So we'll play it by ear, as we have been doing anyway, pretty much. Let's just jump into Jitka's one and see what happens. Really depends on how much text there is because the uh, uh, the the puzzles I can cut down anyway to most important parts, you know. I think we should go right. No, left. Hold on, we should cautiously explore our surroundings first. To be honest, I don't care which way we go, but I don't like crumbling roads. Mickey, Chloe, Olga, and Arsene have formed a circle. They each had their own opinion about which way they should he they should head. Jika timidly watched them from afar. She was sure that sooner or later they would turn in, this would turn into a fight. A stormy atmosphere surrounded them. Although Jika was intimidated, she also felt a glimmer of admiration. It's amazing how everyone is so sure about their opinions. Oh man, people are really sure of their opinions. Where does all that confidence come from? You know, I've always wondered that myself. How do they say what's on their minds so boldly? She dropped her gaze to the floor. I can't do that. Just the hint of a loud voice makes me flinch. I'm such a wimp. I'm so different from the others. With her eyes still on the floor, she quietly walked away. No one noticed she was leaving, and no one called after her. After leaving the clearing, Jika wandered around in a daze. No one's here. I'm all alone. Walking along the quiet hallway where the only sound was her footsteps brought back old feelings. Loneliness. Bitter cold and helplessness. But at the same time, she felt a strange sense of relief. Even when she was with everyone, she often felt alone. No one paid any attention to her. Even if she didn't express her opinions, or quietly left the group, no one noticed. She even felt as if her existence was a burden to everyone. Maybe it would be better if I went off on my own again. Her voice was so quiet that it melted into the silence, without a single echo. After a while, she found herself in an unfamiliar room. It looked like a small break space. It had a few rusting benches, and a small flower bed that had probably held flowers before, but there was no dirt in the flower bed now. I feel sleepy. Jika felt herself stagger. Another flit of drowsiness came upon her. She sat down on the bench, lay down and closed her eyes. Before long she was sleeping like a baby. But she gets those terrible dreams. Where am I? She found herself in a white fog. At first she felt like she was floating, but after a while, she felt a hard floor beneath her feet. Soon enough, the fog started to clear. Jika blinked. In front of her stood an open door. It's that door. She could see a wide space filled with complex machines and clumps of pipes on the other side. That's the, that's the door that has the resin in the, that's the, the ground zero place. The dark factory-like scenery felt stark and terrifying. Oh, I know this place. I've been here before. She knew she had to go through the door, but her body resisted her for some reason. It wouldn't move. I need to go. As she started to feel frustrated, she sensed someone in front of her. She lifted her head and saw Beaky. Come on, you're gonna get left behind. Miki pulled her by the hand and she stumbled forward. It was dark, darker and more in ruins than she'd imagined. Probably because it had been sealed off for so long, the air was stagnant. Miki let go of Jika's hand and continued through the area. When Jika tried to follow, a scream echoed inside of her. I don't want to go in there. I'm too scared to move forward. She stopped moving. What's wrong with me? Why am I so afraid? But deep down she was much more afraid to be left alone in this dark, ruined place. Wait, wait for me, Miki. She forced her legs forward and ran to catch up with Miki. After a while, a strange object appeared before them. What in the world? It looks like some kind of shield. Miki and Olga were speaking up ahead. Olga tried to get close to examine the object, but Chloe stopped her. It's not a good idea. Why not? This is probably Ground Zero, the site of the accident five years ago. The accident five years ago? Pain suddenly filled her heart. But this sudden feeling confused her. Why do I feel so shocked? She couldn't figure it out. Just then, Jika's vision lurched. It's a sign. The dream is about to change. She felt like she was floating, and lost the sense of what was up and what was down. I wonder what my next dream will be. 
I just hope it's not a scary one. As these vague thoughts floated through her head, Jika gave in to the fog. Huh? Once the fog cleared, Jika's surroundings surprised her. She recognized this place. This is the children's room that the doctor prepared for me. Why am I back here? Jika looked around. Her eyes laid on a familiar object on top of the lower, a lower dresser. Oh, it was a small wooden box. Oh, not this thing again, and it was decorated with a beautiful ethnic design. This is the box that the doctor gave me. Actually, the one we looked at didn't have that mosaic pattern on top, did it? The coloured one. A glimmer of happiness flashed across Chica's face. After she was brought to this room, and spent day after day undergoing tests and experiments, the doctor gave her the, the small box. Today is your birthday, so here is your present. My birthday? Jika didn't know what a birthday was. No one had ever celebrated it before. Is this for me? She asked cautiously. The very thought of receiving a present from someone had never crossed your mind. That's right. The doctor smiled. For the first time, Jika smiled from the heart. Thank you. When she shook it, something light jostled around, and she smelled something nice. There's something inside. That's right. It is something nice to calm your nerves. How do I open it? The doctor smiled slyly. That's a secret. Why do you try opening it for yourself? Myself? The doctor left the room with a smile. Hmm. She gave the small box a curious look. In the end, she was never able to open it. It was fixed with a mechanism too difficult for her to crack. At the time, she was both sad and happy. From then on, trying to open the box would be her daily challenge. As someone who had lived only by what the hospital staff told her, this was her very first personal goal. I hope I can see what's inside soon. That day she'd fallen asleep with a nice smelling box in her arms. That's right, I haven't opened the box yet. Soon after, she was taken from the children's room. Then she was put in a cold sleep and only woken for experiments. The same routine happened day after day. She didn't necessarily like the children's room. Once she was awake, she would immediately be taken to the lab. She was being used for experiments, but compared to her previous life, the days spent in this room were decent, and her memory of the wooden box was her only good one. I can't believe I found this box again. She was happy even though it was a dream. I wonder if I can open it now. She picked up the small box. Oh no. Looks like it's going to be different. Oh, I see, so... Oh. We have to take the pits out and put them in. I assume you need to match the colours all the way. And then we've got an exit colour and an entry colour, right? This could take a little while. But we'll do one quick go. Fail. And then, uh... <laughs> I'll fart around with it for a while. While we cut. And I'll bring you back as we get close to actually doing it. So we want one that's blue at the top. So we've got three that are blue at the top, and we got one. We need orange to the right. So we've got three that are orange to the right. So there's three choices for each option. I guess we'll just take the first blue at the top option, which is that one, and stick it there. I guess this goes here. Uh, I guess there's no point doing an orange to the right one, specifically, right? If we do a green to the top one, how many green to the tops do we have? Two. Grab that one. Stick that there. And then we need an orange to the top one, there's only one of those. It should go here. Then we need a yellow to the left. There's only one of those as well. And then we need a green to the left, orange to the right. Green to the left, orange to the right. There's only one of those. But there is one of those. So that's a good sign. Oh, this ain't gonna work because we got blue, blue. So that's already fucked it. <laughs> cool. Alright, so we'll try a different blue top one. Alright, I'll cut here and I'll bring you back once I've figured it out. Try and work from here again and see what we can do. Every time we do that though, it just fucks up in the end, you know? 
Obviously those edge pieces are there to guide us, right? That much is, was obvious from the beginning. There's so many blue top parts, that's the problem. Maybe we should work a different way. So we got two yellow side parts. How many with blue on the right? Only one. So like that one has to go here, right? Maybe if we do it like that, I've been just trying to work a path in, but maybe that's a better way of doing it. And then the middle one has to be yellow on the left, green on the bottom. There can't be too many options like that. Only one. And this one has to be blue on top, yellow on the right. Like that. Right? Okay, we're getting there. So this one has to be yellow on the bottom, orange on the left. Is there any one of those? I think we got this. And then blue, green. Blue bottom, green left. That one. Dude, we did it. Man, that took ages. <laughs> it's the T. It finally opened. Just then, her vision started to warp. Oh, it was the sign her dream was about to change. She felt like she was floating and lost the sense she, of what was up and what was down. Huh? Wait. She yelled. Just when she'd finally opened the box. Just when she was about to see its contents for the first time. Those lightly jostling, nice smelling contents. Please, just wait a minute. It's the tea. Olga's tea. After blinking two or three times, her surroundings came into view. She found herself in the room that she had wandered into after leaving the other girls. The abandoned break space. And back to reality. Jika vaguely understood that. Her heart felt heavy with disappointment. She let out a deep sigh. Just then, she noticed a strange feeling in her palm. When she opened her hand, she found a small smattering of dried dark brown powder. Huh? She'd never seen anything like it before. It felt like dried out leaves crumbled into powder. Oh. A faint scent rose up to her nose, surprising her. It was the same nice smelling scent that had come in from the, come from the small box. This is what it was inside the box? She raised her hand up to her face to get a better look. But all of a sudden, her breath scattered the powder. Oh. The nice smelling powder scattered into the air. Oh no. She disappointedly watched it fall to the ground. Huh? Suddenly she noticed something else on the ground. It was a small flower. A flower? She crouched down to look at the flower. It was a very small flower she couldn't name, but they usually grew among the grass. Although the dead had been taken from the flower bed, a single brave flower had stretched its roots into a clump of forgotten dirt outside of it and bloomed. Of all places, even though no one was there to watch it, the flower grew there quietly. Suddenly, Jika had an epiphany. This flower didn't blossom in order to be seen. It's just living. She sprang to her feet. I'm not here for anyone to notice me. I just have to live and survive. Jika walked out of the room. Her head was high as she walked back the way she'd come. Back to the clearing where the other girls were. Hope all goes well with you. Okay, well, that was not really a plot developing episode, but uh, that was something. I guess we'll kick off the next one. Hopefully the next one's not super long. Still only one. Contagion. This is going to be an important one, obviously. Cross your fingers. This shit might get real. The five girls pressed on in silence. The air was tense as all of them were in bad moods. The slightest thing could make one of them angry. Everyone must be at the peak of exhaustion, Olga thought calmly. Yes, I'm calm, but... She gently wiped sweat from her forehead. Something is strange. For a while now, even Olga had felt strangely irritable. No, I'm not irritable. I feel angry. Meanwhile, Asta and Miki were fighting over something again. Jika meekly tried to stop them. This kind of thing had happened all the time. But today, the three girls' voices strangely grated on Olga's nerves. They're also carefree. I doubt they're even thinking. They do things that put us all in danger. Let their emotions take over and run off somewhere, only following what others tell them. And never try to think for themselves. And then there's Chloe, sometimes intervening with that oddly calm and collected tone. Chloe was the one who irritated Olga the most. She couldn't stand her domineering attitude. Sure, Chloe had the brains and knowledge of a genius. It was even hard for Olga to believe that someone that smart could be the same age as she was. And she was the only one... And she was the only one always calm and collected. Yet she exposed the others to dangerous situations without a second thought. No one could tell what she was thinking. But even more importantly, they couldn't trust what she was thinking. Up until this point, 
Olga had believed that they wouldn't be saved unless they worked together. That is why she'd stuck with the group and pushed them forward, despite their many differences. She charged herself with watching out for everyone's safety, but today a different thought flashed through her mind. What was it all for? Maybe acting alone is a much safer choice. She reached a decision. That's right, go off on your own. A voice spoke strongly and firmly in Olga's mind. Then it continued. How do you do it? Just get rid of the others. How do you get rid of them? The voice in her mind grew into a scream. Kill them. Olga stopped in surprise, but the voice in her head continued. Do it. Kill them. Kill them. Stop. Olga squeezed her eyes shut and shook her head. What's wrong? Someone spoke to her from behind. It was Chloe. Meanwhile, the voice in Olga's mind kept talking. Her. Yes, kill her. You hate her the most. You don't need her. Olga looked back at Chloe. She could feel her gaze grow, grow cold and piercing. Problem is, she is the smartest member, even though she is a dick. I agree that Chloe's a dick, but we need her because she's clever as fuck. <laughs> Kill her! Her fingers twitched. All she had to do was raise her arms, grab Chloe's neck and squeeze it with all her strength. The other girls would stop him, stop her. Suddenly Chloe smirked. Did she just smile? Olga suddenly came to her senses. What was I thinking just now? What's with the strange face? Huh? It's nothing. Really? Chloe looked like she wanted to say something, but Olga avoided her probing look. Fine, hey, why don't we take a break? Good idea. Olga just wanted to get away from Chloe's all-knowing gaze and be alone. The party found a perfect place to sleep. It was a relatively safe-looking night watchtower that had not yet suffered much damage. Olga took the room furthest from the others. The reason for this was her insuppressible anger. She'd started feeling it a few minutes before Chloe suggested they stop to rest. Not only was the anger not getting better, it was growing stronger inside her heart. I hate her. I hate Chloe. Overwhelmed by these powerful feelings, Olga wondered to herself. Chloe had never been someone she liked, but she didn't have a reason to hate her this much. Then why? Why is this insuppressible hatred bubbling up inside of me? Olga clenched her fists. She clenched them so hard in fact that her knuckles turned white and started shaking. When this didn't satisfy her, she started pounding her fist on the wall. She didn't even try to stop herself. Her fist came down on the wall time and time again. If she didn't do this, the hatred would take over her entire body. She wasn't sure where these emotions were coming from. But she knew one thing. I can't stay here. At this rate I'll... No. She started to fear her own thoughts. Anyway, I need to get away from everyone. She took off. Once she arrived at an area far from the others, she tried to catch her breath. But as she did this, the hatred started to spread, and the strange voice echoed inside her head again. Kill. Kill them! She bit her lip and withstood the anger. Something isn't right. But although she felt herself getting carried away, she pondered with her last bit of sanity. I've never experienced this much anger before. It's too sudden. Has the exhaustion driven me mad? A chill ran up her spine. She had to look into this. With trembling hands, she opened her bag and pulled out her medical scanner. Then she turned it on and waved it over her body. The machine made its usual scanning noise. When it was done, it beeped and displayed some words on its screen. Contagion. Furiovirus. Olga did a double take. Furiovirus? I've never heard of that before. What in the world did I catch? You know, Furiosa from Fury Road. She pressed some buttons to learn more about the virus but the screen displayed the following words. No data. No data? It can't be. Although the scanner knew the virus's name, it had absolutely no data on what it was. There was no symptoms, no risks, nothing. Why is this happening? Is it an illness that hasn't been discovered yet? Well, then it wouldn't have a fucking name, would it? Suddenly Olga noticed something strange. The powerful anger and voice inside her head disappeared. She'd done nothing to treat herself. All she'd done was scan herself to identify the problem. Olga? When Olga returned to the tower, Miki came running over. Where were you? You just disappeared so suddenly I was worried. I'm sorry, I just had to check on something. Did you need something from me? Miki gave her a meek look. Yeah, I scraped myself. Could I have a bandage? Sure, where's, that, where's the scrape? I'll take a look at it. When Olga pulled out the medical scanner, Miki looked embarrassed. It's not a big deal. Even the smallest scrape can lead to an infection. Just let me see it. She took Miki's hand and quickly scanned the wound. Her heart raced at the memory of the words that had appeared when she'd scanned herself. 
Meanwhile, the machine beeped to signal the scan was complete. Olga looked at the screen. Contagion. Furio virus. What? Miki raised her voice anxiously beside her. What's the Furio virus? I'm not sure, but it looks like we've all been infected with... Before she could finish her sentence, she noticed Miki's expression grow dark. Then, the usual friendly look in her eyes suddenly faded. Miki? Olga addressed her. What do you mean you're not sure? Miki answered in a terrible low tone of voice. It sounded like a voice full of suppressed anger about to burst. Olga could tell. This was the same inexplicable anger she'd felt just minutes before. She couldn't believe Miki was now experiencing the same thing. Go get the others, we need to examine everyone. She stood up. Hey, tell me what it is. What's the Furio virus? Miki's uncharacteristically angry voice came from behind. Hold on, Olga, explain it to me or I'll kill you. What's going on? Why do we have to get together on our break? Asana was very vocally grumpy. Chloe looked similarly unhappy and Jika... Hmm? Yeah. Staggered behind as if, she, as if she was sleepwalking. Olga had gathered everyone together inside the tower. Miki's shoulders were still shaking with anger. Miki, what's wrong? You're late. Miki spoke in a subdued, angry voice as Asuna approached her. What? Asuna took a step back and the other two girls looked shocked. But Olga, who had suffered the same symptoms, knew what was going on. Miki also probably felt that her anger was not normal. She seemed to be holding back as much as she could. Hold on, Miki. Their anger should be disappearing soon enough. She scanned Miki again in front of everyone. The same result appeared on the screen. Contagion, Furio virus. Olga explained as the three girls started to stir. The same result appeared for me. It looks like an unknown virus is going around. Please let me scan you to see if you have it. That's creepy, get it over with. Although she put up a front, Arsena was probably the most scared of the group. Olga quickly waved the scanner over her. Then she checked the screen. Contagion Furio virus. No. Asuna's eyes filled with tears. What's a Furio virus? Gross, I'm so angry. <laughs> no, Olga, that's scary. Don't worry, it won't hurt. Since Jika seemed to be this strangely afraid of the scanner, Olga gently took her arm and waved the scanner over it. She checked the screen. Normal. Am I sick? No, it looks like you're fine. At least it seems the whole party was not infected. Although, she didn't understand what was happening yet. Olga felt slightly relieved. Furio, huh? Chloe murmured as Olga, Olga approached her with the scanner. It means Goddess of Revenge in Esperanto. Goddess of Revenge? The scanner beeped to a signal completion. Normal. Heh. <laughs> Looks like there's no problem here. Yes. As Chloe stood there, Olga remembered her murderous feelings towards her just a few hours ago. Now she knew that they were just a fluke. But at the time, they were serious. It was almost as if the Goddess of Revenge had possessed her. Furio virus. A virus of the Goddess of Revenge. As Olga whispered to herself, Chloe chimed in. Mm, I've heard of that before. You have? I overheard rumours about a virus somewhere. That changed people's personalities, making them savage. The virus is a byproduct of something. And it could change a person's personality in seconds. As a result, they would turn into raging killers. Just like the Goddess of Revenge herself. Olga felt herself turn pale. I think I remember hearing those rumours too. Do you remember what happened in the end? Apparently the angry personality disappeared in a day, but it also destroyed its victim's own personality. That's what I heard. Olga suddenly wondered about the angry personality. She no longer felt angry, nor could she hear the voice in her head. Did it only last a certain period of time? Or did something else make it disappear? Maybe if one's anger didn't surface strongly, the scanner could not detect it. As Olga was lost in thought, Chloe seemed to be pondering something herself. After a while, she spoke. Anyway, Olga, whatever this virus may be, you, Miki, and Asuna have clearly been infected. Yeah, we can't say anything for sure since we don't know how it spreads, but as long as Jika and I are with you three, there's a chance of us getting infected too. Yes, it's true. Olga nodded. A strange glimmer flashed through Chloe's eyes, but Olga didn't see it. I hate to do this, but I think the infected group should quarantine yourselves. If this is the virus we've heard about, the three of you will become murderers. And your personalities will be destroyed in a day. That's true. 
I'll look for a way to avoid danger. Meanwhile, I need the other I need the three of you to lock yourselves up. What Chloe said was completely logical, but a thought passed through Olga's mind. Why don't I feel angry right now? Olga held up the scanner and started scanning herself. What are you doing? Let's go. Wait a minute. The scanner beeped and the word normal appeared on its screen. Chloe lowered her voice. Normal, I guess you don't feel like quarantining. But Olga wasn't confident about the scanner's results. This might be just be a lull in the virus. What if that powerful anger took over again? Next time she might kill Chloe for real. I'm going. Lock the three of us up. But that means Chloe and Jika might be infected as well. They're just in a lull, so it's not coming up. If the scanner can't be trusted, then you can't you have to assume that everyone might be infected. Arsena came running towards them. Hey you two. Why are you making this decision for us? I heard everything. The scanner says you don't have the virus anymore, right Olga? Y yeah. Then how can you jump to the conclusion that Miki and I are sick? The scanner might be broken for a we know. Give it here. Arsena wrenched the machine out of Olga's hand. I just pressed the button, right? She waved the scanner over herself, but the same words appeared on the screen. Contagion Furio virus. What? Why? As Arsena started screaming, Chloe murmured. <laughs> Looks like you're definitely infected. Olga watched Arsena and Chloe from the sidelines. Suddenly she sent someone behind her and spun around. Miki? Is this all because of the virus? Miki's calm voice came as a surprise. And Miki recovered too? All of a sudden, Arsena's angry voice reverberated through the room. Ouch, that hurts. Stop being so violent. Chloe walked over, twisting Arsena's arm so that she couldn't escape. I need all of you to go into your rooms. Okay? Chloe held out her hand. Do you mind handing over your scanner? If Jika and I get infected, we'll voluntarily self-quarantine. Voluntarily, eh? Miki rolled her eyes sarcastically, but Olga willingly handed over the scanner. Come on, let's go. I'll lock your rooms from the outside. Then I'll unlock them tomorrow. With that, Chloe closed the doors. Olga heard the lock click on the outside. She glanced around the room. What are we searching for? We're not trying to escape. I'm just going to look around. The PC isn't on. No shit, Sherlock. Turn it on then. Bloody hell. This... This doesn't look useful. What is this? Ah, power. The breaker trip. Doesn't seem like it's low on power. Hmm. Huh. What then? What is tripping it? Chair? Alright, what do we got? Maybe we just need to turn off some of the things that are taking power. What is this? Can't open this without an ID card, huh? Magnifying glass. Looks like the lower door won't open. Okay. Spoon? Do I need a spoon? Bed's a little messy. It is, someone left here in a hurry. Or they just don't, can't be fucked cleaning their bed. The refrigerator is too big for this room. There's a really large refrigerator here, I see that. Pencil? Cup? Mirror? What is that? There's a small thin crack. What did we pick up before? Magnifying glass, I guess we can look in the crack. Something's in the back, but I can't take it out with my fingers. Hmm. There's a keyhole. Good. So we need like a pair of tweezers, right? We can't open the drawer. A pair of tweezers, well, that's exactly what I thought I needed, actually. So thanks for that. Grab the thing. Contains small piece of paper. Something's written on it, but it's too small. Okay. Magnifying glass? It's weird how it has to be one way, not the other. Take a closer look at the magnifying glass. What? I mean, I just did take a closer look at the magnifying glass. But I don't know... 
I don't know what Cyrillic letters mean, you know? If they are Cyrillic letters. I think they are, aren't they? But they mean nothing to me, I'm afraid. Alright, whatever. Take a look at the small paper. Okay, I can do that any time. Maybe I can use that somehow. Something to do with the fridge? What's that? Came out pretty easily. That'll stop the breaker tripping, right? Flip the switch. Okay, we're good. Computer. Oh, it's the password. I see. Oh, it's a lot of words. A lot of letters. Uh, the, the fact that I have no familiarity with these letters makes it a lot harder. Um, Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, this is very daunting. <laughs> okay, we'll try and do this one, I guess. Um, that one? What else we got? Is it all three of these or what? What is this then? It's like a BI thing? And then a Y and then a K. Is the BI thing one letter or is it more than one letter? That's oh, this one. It's only four letters. Does that mean it's up and down? This one, A, whatever that is, R, W, K? Maybe? W is that? W with a little ticky bit. That one, I guess. And then there's a, a K. This K? So their password was wrong. Alright. This one. This one. This one. And this one. I'd love to say I worked it out, but I totally looked it up. Because I can't figure it out. I'll spend ages trying to figure it out, but I don't even know the letters. I got no fucking idea. Looks like it's been unlocked. The computer started up. I can use this. I might be able to use this to look something up. I'll get to search for Furio virus. After a while, one file came up. However, high security file. Cannot view this with ID. Olga furrowed her brow. Looks like the Furio virus is top a top level secret. Government protected information. Well, I do have high level ID from the hospital. Take out father's ID card. Use that shit. The file named Goddess of Vengeance. An ID card popped out. Just a random ID card. Put, put Daddy Dearest's ID card in. She clicked Agree and the file opened. It was called the Goddess of Revenge. There's no doubt about it. This is it. Her eyes widened as she scanned the information. A nanomachine virus. It turned out that the Furio virus is not a pathogen. It was a type of computer virus that targeted the body's internal nanomachine. In this day and age, everyone's body contains several types of nanomachines. These machines were injected into the body at birth to prevent infections, cure illnesses and suppress genetic diseases. The Furio virus appeared to be a kind of software that took over the nanomachines in everyone's immune systems and overwrote a part of their program. These overwritten nanomachines gradually overwrote nearby nanomachines until they reached the brain. Once in the brain, the infected nanomachines pretended to act like a synapse. Then they formed a new fake synapse network. The only that only selected and increased the patient's anger. As a result, the patient gradually became savage, and their personality was eventually destroyed. So it's a virus program. Now it all makes sense. After reading through this information, Olga understood everything. If the Furio virus was a program that infected immune systems, system nanomachines, they could also infect machines with program code. The key was the medical scanner. 
It contained all of the nano machine's programs. It was probably what the was infecting everyone. Now that she thought about it, Miki and Asana showed symptoms only after they'd been scanned. Meanwhile, Chloe and Jika appeared normal when scanned, because the virus had already spread to someone else. In other words, the Furo virus could no longer leave behind copies after it infected someone or something. It could only travel from one victim to the next. It all adds up. The reason I was infected first was because I used the medical scanner the most. Olga was convinced. She must have pressed a button that unlocked the safety settings holding the virus. But something bothered her. She accessed this high level, high security secret data using her father's ID. In other words, this virus is part of her father's research. What in the world is my father researching? Her long standing suspicions against her father bubbled up. They were now starting to take concrete shape. But there was one thing she had to look into first. I have to find a way to kill the virus. Olga researched the virus for several hours. Finally, she found a conclusive cure. It involved using what was called a cold sleep machine. Nano machines were the simplest physiological modification tool that humankind possessed. But like all machines, they sometimes malfunctioned. When this occurred in a certain part of the body, the machines could be surgically removed or destroyed with the targeted with targeted radiation. However, if the malfunctioning machine spread too far through the body, there would be too many to remove surgically, and radiation therapy came at the risk of destroying the good machines along with the bad. Therefore, as a safety precaution, all nano machines were made to reset themselves at a temperature of negative 20 degrees. If the nano machines infected the Furio virus are put into a cold sleep machine, they should all reset. She'd seen a cold sleep machine in the hospital's infirmary ward. It was pretty far from their current location, and it would take about a day to get there. But this ward was under the hospital's jurisdiction. There had to be a cold sleep machine around here. I'm going to find a cold sleep machine. Olga promised herself. Now she knew how to incapacitate the virus. In the meantime, she traced the scanner's usage to see who was infected. First the virus moved from me to the scanner. Then it moved from the scanner to Miki, and from Miki back to the scanner. Then it moved from the scanner to Asana. She would have already been infected anyway, because we scanned her when we first found her covered in blood. Right? When I scanned Jika and Chloe, the virus was still in Asana. Then it moved from Asana to the scanner, so... The virus is now inside the health scanner. She had to tell Chloe. Can you hear me, Chloe? Open up, I found out more about the virus. She banged on the door and yelled. No matter how long she waited, or how loud she yelled, Chloe didn't come. Maybe she isn't nearby. At the same time, she had this sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach. What if Chloe used the scanner? I have to get out of here. Okay, we're gonna break out after all. Search? We've already searched this bloody room. There's nothing here. We're gonna pick the lock with a pair of tweezers. Maybe we could do that. There's a keyhole. The doorknob looks like it could come off at any time. Doesn't look like these screws can be removed by hand. I was gonna use the tweezers, come on. Use the card. What, do you expect me to find a screwdriver around here? I hope not. Um, maybe they're expecting a screwdriver to happen? Oh, can we open this yet? Without an ID card. We use this ID card. Looks like it's been unlocked. How convenient. That drawer had a screwdriver in it. Exactly what we needed. What are the odds? Remove screws with screwdriver. Free doorknob? Oh, come on. <laughs> really? The numbers look upside down. Yes, I noticed. Is there any reason, any way I should know what the number is? Whatever it says on this card, maybe? Ugh, I'm not sure this is helpful, to be honest. Wait, does this say anything? There's something engraved on the back of the doorknob. Something's written on the back of the doorknob. Is this a serial number? Alright. Why can't you just let me look at the serial number? Let's look it up. Olga started looking into the serial number on the doorknob. Okay, whatever. Found two files. Well, that was easy. 
What did they say? Oh my god, that wasn't easy. What is all this? Look at result one. Look at result two. Four digits, then a hyphen, then two digits? Oh, right there. Jeez, I can't even freaking see. Look, four digit, two digit, right here. Four, eight, five, two, seven, one. Four, eight, five, two, dash, seven, one. So those are the answer, right? But this is the back of it, so it has to be the opposite, right? So is it just four, eight, four, eight, five, two? Which would make this... Six... Two... Five... Eight. Yeah, sixty-five eight. Oh, maybe it actually is minus. Four eight five two minus seventy one. Do you think? So that'd be um seven fifteen eight four seven eight one, which would make the Code six three two a uh, uh, nine. Or is it the other way around? Hang on, maybe it's the other way around. Nine two three six. Oh, there we go. Unlock the door. Dude, what a bitch. Olga ran out as soon as she opened the door. Chloe? Chloe, where are you? Chloe? I got a bad feeling about this. Oh my god, did GK kill Chloe? That's the opposite of what I thought might happen. Oh, now the rest of that section has opened up. We just had to do that one first. Nice. Alright, well, we'll wrap this one up here, obviously, because I've been rewarding for ages again. I have to cut that one down, and then we've got a whole bunch to do in this group now. Curious to see how Chloe and Jika's thing goes though. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks again out for me and I'll see you in the next one.